When driving on wet roads you should a. Decrease your speed to no greater than 5 miles per hour. b. Increase your following distance to about 15 to 20 seconds. c. Decrease your following distance. d. Increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds. When driving on wet roads you should d. Increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds. Whenever you drive on wet surfaces it is a good idea to increase your following distance. A general rule of thumb is to increase your following distance to about 5 or 6 seconds when it is raining or when the road is wet. More space between your vehicle and the car in front of you will give you more time to react and more time to stop effectively, if necessary. On expressways it is recommended to pass on the A. Left. B. Right. C. Shoulder. D. Any lane. On expressways it is recommended to pass on the A. Left. If you are traveling on a multi-lane expressway, it is recommended to pass on the left. While passing on the right is permitted on roads with multiple lanes of traffic moving in the same direction, passing on the left is typically safer and helps with the flow of traffic. For one, slower traffic, traffic entering and exiting the freeway, and large trucks often use the right side of the road. There are typically more cars changing lanes on the right. If you pass on the left, you'll often have a clearer path for passing and the cars you are passing will typically be able to see you more easily. While you are passing on a two-lane road, a. Make sure there is enough space from oncoming vehicles and then accelerate above the speed limit to pass. b. Make sure there is enough space from oncoming vehicles and enough space for you to return to your lane after passing the vehicle in front of you. c. Oncoming vehicles will need to stop and yield to you. D. The cars in your lane must stop until you have safely returned. While you are passing on a two-lane road. B. Make sure there is enough space from oncoming vehicles and enough space for you to return to your lane after passing the vehicle in front of you. Passing other vehicles on a two-lane road with traffic that moves in the opposite directions can be a dangerous maneuver. Two of the most important things you'll need when passing on a two-lane road are. Enough distance for any oncoming traffic. Safe space to return to your lane after making the pass. If you have abs on your car the best way to use the brake system is to A. Only depress the brake pedal halfway. B. Apply steady pressure to the brake pedal. C. Pump your brakes. D. Use the brake pedal and parking brake at the same time. If you have abs on your car the best way to use the brake system is to b. Apply steady pressure to the brake pedal. One of the most important parts of being a safe driver is knowing how to operate your vehicle effectively. And a big part of that is knowing how to properly use the braking system. If your vehicle is equipped with abs, anti-lock braking system, the most effective way to apply the brakes is by using steady, constant pressure on the brake pedal. The ABS system will ensure your brakes do not lock up and cause you to skid, and will stop the car as quickly as possible. The most important thing in backing a motor vehicle is A. To back up at 10 miles per hour. B. To keep your hands positioned at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock on your steering wheel. C. To only use your rearview mirror to look behind you. D. To use your mirrors and turn your head when backing up so you can yield to other vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. The most important thing in backing a motor vehicle is, D. To use your mirrors and turn your head when backing up so you can yield to other vehicles, bicycles, and pedestrians. Driving in reverse can be a dangerous maneuver, and it's important that you do it safely and correctly. Before you get into your car when you're about to back up, it's a good idea to check around your vehicle for any hazards and to gauge how much space you have. Once you're inside your vehicle, use your mirrors to do an initial check behind and around you, and then turn your head to look out of your rearview mirror as you back up. It is unsafe to only rely on your mirrors when backing up. At a four-way stop, if two cars arrive at the intersection at the same time, a. The vehicle on the left should yield to the vehicle on the right. B. The vehicle on the right should yield to the vehicle on the left. 
C. The vehicle with more passengers should go first. D. The heaviest vehicle should go first. At a four-way stop, if two cars arrive at the intersection at the same time, A. The vehicle on the left should yield to the vehicle on the right. Under normal circumstances, the vehicle to arrive at an intersection first should be the vehicle to go first. But, what happens when two vehicles arrive at the stop sign at the same time? When two vehicles arrive at the same time, the right-of-way guidelines dictate that the vehicle on the right should go first. When the foot brake is pressed, which light must come on? A. Emergency flashers. B. Headlights. C. Brake lights. D. Tail lights. When the foot brake is pressed, which light must come on? C. Brake lights. Your vehicle's lights are an important part of sharing the road and communicating with other drivers. All vehicles are required to be equipped with working brake lights. When you press the brake pedal, your brake lights, which are red in color and located on the back of your vehicle, need to light up. A broken white line between lanes on the roadway means A. The lanes are moving in the same direction. B. The lanes are moving in opposite directions. C. The lines cannot be crossed. D. You are in a carpool lane. A broken white line between lanes on the roadway means A. The lanes are moving in the same direction. White lines are used for traffic moving in the same direction. If there are broken white lines between lanes of traffic, that means that drivers can cross the lines to change lanes or pass. If you do cross a broken white line, you still need to exercise caution and check your mirrors and blind spots to ensure there are no other cars, motorcycles, or bicycles occupying the lane. If you damage an unattended vehicle you must A. Leave the scene immediately. B. Find the owner or leave a note. C. Call your insurance company. D. Call a tow truck to have the vehicle moved. If you damage an unattended vehicle you must B. Find the owner or leave a note. If you are driving and you hit an unattended vehicle or a parked car, there are some steps you'll need to take. First, you'll need to make a reasonable attempt to find the owner. If there are people nearby, this includes asking if anyone knows who owns the car. If the car is parked in a neighborhood, this could include knocking on someone's door and asking them. If you are not able to find the owner of the vehicle, you are required to leave a note that includes your full name, your address, your contact information, the circumstances of the accident. Locked wheel skids are usually caused by a. Driving too fast. B. Driving on slippery surfaces. C. Braking too hard at a high speed. D. Braking gradually. Locked wheel skids are usually caused by C. Braking too hard at a high speed. In these instances, the wheels lock up, and the vehicle will skid regardless of where you turn the steering wheel. To deal with a locked wheel skid, you should first remove your foot from the brake pedal to unlock the wheels. Next, use the steering wheel to steer the vehicle straight. You can avoid locked wheel skids altogether by driving at safe speeds and applying the brakes gradually. Great job! Here are some of your next steps to getting your learner's permit or driver's license. Read and study the official driver handbook from your state DMV. Take more free practice tests at puedomanejar.com. Gather all your necessary forms and documents before you visit the DMV office. Before you know it, you'll be driving in your very own car all by yourself. PuedoManejar.com Free DMV practice tests and much more to help you pass your real exams. Visit us today.